Westminster City Council meeting is funded in part by the Carolis Insurance Agency at www.thecarolisinsuranceagency.com and by Avidia Bank at www.avidiabank.com. And we do have a, um, a quick presentation of a citation for Judy Sumner. Judy, probably for the last time ever, I'm gonna invite you into our chambers. You're our newly retired um, employee of the city. And Councilor Brady had asked at the last meeting that we just take a moment and recognize you and all of your service. So um, the we are- um, <laughs> Or sit down or stand up? Whatever you're more comfortable with, you can sit down or stand, whatever okay. whatever you're more okay. comfortable with. I will just start out by saying we just want to thank you very, very much for all you've done for the city of Lemonster and all the, the children in the city of Lemonster um, that you've served over the years um, at the recreation department. So um, Councilor Brady has a, um, a citation he's gonna read and present to you, so I'll let him I'll just, proceed. Uh, do this real quick. Um, City of Lemonster, the City Council, Certificate of Achievement to Judith M. Sumner in recognition of 28 years of work for the City of Lemonster Recreation Department. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, working with you on the one project that's still ongoing. Yeah. It's gonna be a legacy, uh, the uh, Frankie Fortuna Skate Park. Oh, wow. Um, and unfortunately, we missed the invite to the whole big celebration, so we had to have our own oh, okay. for you. <laughs> so on behalf of the entire city council, okay. okay. Congratulations and thank you. Well, this is a big honor. Thank you so much. It's an honor to have worked for the city of Lemonster. I appreciate having been hired by the city. And Lemonster is a wonderful community to work for, and I met so many great people throughout my career. You know, they so many people have helped me grow, both personally and professionally throughout the years. I've had great staff. You know, I had Lisa Como's been with me for like 17 years as my assistant. Amory Sargent was my program coordinator for 25 years. We did great programs together. Um, and then JR helped me help with all of the projects that we did. We renovated all the playgrounds and built the splash park. And we did so many different, and then we um, renovated Barrett Park. Uh, so I was very fortunate to have them. And then at the office, Carol Blair, she was there for 20 years with mm -hmm. us. Uh, there were so many people that had been here for years and years. And they had hundreds of volunteers. Every year we had 100 volunteers just for basketball alone. Wow. And then we had volunteers come out with the churches. We had volunteers at United Way. And of course we had the trail stewards. 
Uh, this is a one, Lemonster is just a wonderful community to work for. There's so many great people here, and there's so many supportive people, and I, I just really appreciate everything that everyone has done and all the support that everyone has given me that helped me throughout my career. So, and the city council, of course, has helped me with everything, my budget, and then the mayor <laughs> has supported me in everything, and then, you know, we were very supportive of getting grants, so, you know, it has been wonderful. You know, just the people in the community have been, you know, thankful for the programs and the activities and the parks, so it's been a, a wonderful, um, you know, job to have in the community. So thank, thank you. you again. Good. Thank Congratulations. you very much. Job well done. Councilor Frieda, your hand first. Judy, I just want to uh, congratulate you as uh, one of the people who 28 years ago hired you. Uh, we had a conversation about that. Um, and it, was, it certainly was a good move. You have the kids have been number one with you. Um, your enthusiasm today was the same as it was 28 years ago when you sat there and interviewed with us. Um, you just loved what you did and it showed. And uh, we're very lucky to have you all those years. So thank you and enjoy your grandchildren. I know you're gonna do that. Um, you, they're, they're my parents are still alive, so it's time with That's them. so nice. And then my husband, Mark, is here. He supported me through here for about long hours, <laughs> and nights, and weekends, and Right. So we should be thanking him too, I guess, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and their kids are saying, hey, you're not at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, yeah. uh, and I want to thank Greg as well. Greg has helped me so much with so many projects, with everything. He's had a lot of patience with me <laughs> throughout the years. So. Absolutely. And all the city employees as well. Everybody's been so supportive in every department in the city. Mm. So. And I think Councilor Shaw Pusefer, I saw your hand as well. Yeah, thank you very much. I just want to say thank you, Judy, for the 28 years. And the city, when you look around the city and you look at each and every park, all the new ones, all the old ones, all the renovations, the refurbishing, uh, it, it was a team effort because lots of folks in the city, you know, have, have been part of all of that transformation. But you provided the leadership. And I think that's that's what certainly that's what I supported. And as Councilor Frieda said, I know that you you know always had the kids you know foremost in your mind. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any other comments? Thank you very much, Judy. We really appreciate all your service. We hope you have a very healthy and happy and long retirement. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. We have a 6.41 p.m. informational meeting with Greg Chapelain relative to six-year contracts. Thank you, Mr. Chapelain, for coming in. I know we've, uh, it was mentioned a few meetings ago that we wanted to have you in. Um, I'm sure at this point, um, as I had discussed with you when I had spoken to you about coming in, I asked you to put together sort of a synopsis on how many contracts we, we have so far and what the potential ones are in the future, and I'm sure you put a bunch of data together, so I'll let you have the floor and then we'll open up to questions. Very good, good evening, councilors. Pleased to be here. Uh, the purpose of tonight is to discuss the multi-year contracts, the uh, ones that are extend beyond the typical one and three year contracts. Uh, the reasoning for that and how many we have. I'll start off by telling you uh, exactly how many of the multi-year ones we now have. Currently we have five contracts that run, that run five years. We have nine contracts in force that run six years. And we have one contract that one runs 10 years. That's the forestry manage, management services, if you recall last year. That one's a little uh, unusual. Um, and we have a number of contracts, mostly uh, building and road, con b building construction or repair and road construction projects, uh, a number of them that run anywhere from two to three years. Um, the, the big question I believe was called down for is, uh, what is the need for the multi-year contracts, not necessarily the three-year or, or less because those are standard, but the, uh, the longer-term ones, the five- and six-year contracts. Um, the reason why we do those is uh, multiple reasons. Um, one, 
in none of the reasons take precedence over any uh, over the other. It's pretty much uh, they're all even. They all make up the equation of why we do them. Um, I'll give you a quick background on how we do our contracts. When we get into services that we haven't done before, which believe it or not, there's always something that comes along we have not done in the past. It's a big city, we have a lot of services, a lot of things we get involved in. And when something comes along that maybe we were doing it in house and now we contract it out or whatever the situation is, uh, depending on what the need is, we'll do anywhere from a one to three year contract. Sometimes it's a one year contract. Um, because it's something we haven't done before, we're not very familiar with it, and it's easier just to have the contract run its course in one year and terminate versus getting into a multi-year contract and finding out that the service that we've contracted out isn't working out quite well, either because the vendor isn't living up to standards or many times because we weren't as well versed in it in the service as we thought we were. Um, so we'll do a one-year contract, and we might do a one-year contract, a couple contract terms, till we get a, a handle on what it is we need, uh, the services, how they work, what best benefits the city, and we'll move to a three-year contract. And after we've done three-year contracts uh, for quite a while and we're, we're used to how they work, we don't think we really need many changes to them except you know the minor tweak once in a while. We know who the vendors are and whatnot. Uh, there's really no reason, in our opinion, to keep bidding a three-year contract because you just keep changing vendors over and over again in a short period of time. Um, there are those people who think that three years is a long period of time. As you get older, those three years go by a lot quicker. Uh, certainly in city operations, they seem to fly by. So once we are pretty um, self-assured as to what we're doing, we like to move to the five and six year contracts to lock those in, less vendor turnover. That means less retraining of all the departments when you get new vendors in the way they work. Um, a number of times, not always, but a number of times we'll get better pricing for a, a longer term contract because if there's equipment needs in the services that we're getting, the vendors can amortize the cost of that equipment over a longer period of time so they can pass the savings on to us. Uh, that's basically the main reason why we get into the long term contracts. And I'm uh, working in my 30th year now, so we've done a lot of three year contracts for a lot, a lot of years. And the five and six year contracts really have been in the last 10 years that we've been migrating to those. Um, I'll give you an example of what we're doing, and most of them are services. Uh, for the five year contracts, our trash and recycling curbside collection is five years. We have an energy consultant, which is a company that guides and advises the city and goes out to market for us for our electrical and natural gas supply for all the city buildings. Internet service for limits to public schools, school bus transportation services, and uh, the cafeteria management program. And for six year contracts, currently we have the ambulance billing and collection service, banking services, lockbox services. Lockbox services is for the um, receiving of payments and bills and whatnot by a service that turns the, collects the money and turns it over to the city, real estate taxes and things like that. Payroll processing services, bill printing and mailing, which is all the bills that the city sends out, taxes, excise tax, personal property, sewer, water, things of that nature. Information technology managed services, that's um, the company that acts as the de facto uh, IT department for the city because we don't have our own IT personnel and that actually works very well in that arrangement. Uh, certification of real estate values, risk management advisor, the risk management advisor is a firm out of Boston that we currently have under contract that again instructs us and advises the city and goes out to market for all our property liability and workers comp insurance. It's a very complex field to work in so that's why we have an advisor to guide us on that and they do save us money. Uh, animal control and animal inspection services is the last six year contract we currently have in forestry management services which is 10 years which that's the only one and only time we've done a 10 year contract and just a quick recap of that that's because the DPW is required by um, Mass DEP to have a forest management management uh, plan in place and how they're going to manage all the city's forest lands and the various watersheds. We go out to bid, we hire a consulting firm that specializes in this, they put the plan together. Their services are basically done in six months, but the plan that the DEP makes the city put together is a 10-year plan. 
So, and the forestry management consultant has to be there to answer any questions over those 10 years should the DEP investigate something or find something in the plan year five that, hey, we don't think this is working well or something like that. So instead of bidding uh, a three or five year contract for a forestry management consultant, and then we're forced to rebid it midway through that 10 year plan that DEP makes us have, we found it better just have that consultant run the 10 years with the contract. In addition to that, at some point, we'll get back into uh, timber harvesting in our various forest lands, which is getting rid of all the dead timber and thinning out some of the better stuff so the really good trees have uh, more room to grow and thrive, and they will take care of putting together the sale plan to market that to lumber companies, which will pay for that separately each time we do it. But that's why we have a 10-year contract with them, so they can just write it out through the 10-year term that DEP mandates. So those are basically our long-term contracts, our extra long-term ones, the ones that you need to vote to approve, which I thank you very much for doing that. Um, and that's why they are in place the way they are. Okay. <clears throat> Does anybody have any <coughs> questions for Mr. Chapdelaine? Councilor Fried, I'll let you go first, and then Councilor Schaaf was there for afterward. Greg, I'm the one that kind of questioned the, the differences, sure. and it wasn't necessarily uh, to explain the six-year contract, I knew what that was. Okay. It was more, at, at what point, um, at what point do you determine that it's cost-effective to go six years instead of three? I mean, in the normal course, I would think almost all the time, but do you put it out to bid for three and six, or you just? Um, no, you can only put it out for one one period of time, it has to be, so you can't do a bid where you, it's an either or, it has to be one right. delineated time period, it's the way the purchasing laws work. We only move to a six or five year contract, as I said, after we've done them for a number of years, and we're very confident based on what we think as um, specifications for the service we need, and also we have a, a very good understanding of the marketplace, that it's going to uh, mesh well, and that's when we, we move to the six year. In, in addition to price, as I said, it just benefits us in operationally, so we aren't retraining the employees like banking services. Every time we move to a new bank, they have different ways of how they receive money and track these things for the city and the various paperwork and reports that they want from us and that we want from them. So you end up training the comptroller's office and the treasurer collector staff again over each time you change, and it can take several months before they get into the swing of things. And since we're very confident in how that works, and the only banks that can service the city, uh, because there are uh, geographic restraints as well, are the banks in Lemonster. There's no reason to, to switch it every three years. It doesn't benefit anybody in that, for that reason. So we went for, a, after we've done it for three years, for a number of years, we get to the point where we say, there's no reason to do this anymore. Let's go for a six year contract. And the reason why we do six years is because within the marketplace and the various marketplaces for all these services and talking with vendors and whatnot, anything beyond six years is too much for someone to uh, grasp. They can't really uh, forecast that far out what their costs would be. And nor, the, nor can the city forecast exactly what our needs would be. So it would be financially imprudent at that point to go farther than a five or six year term for many of these contracts. That's why it's cut off at six, and that's our choice. Are there escalation clauses in most of those as well? If yes, uh, most of these contracts, it's not so much an escalation clause as it's set pricing for those years. If we ask for six years, their pricing is locked in. They, they bid the six year price. But it, you know, in most cases, it does increase. They, you know, if they, like the dog officer, uh, I think he was uh, leaving it his last contract was, don't quote me, this thing is like 95,000. His new contract, I believe off the top of my head, his first year was 101,000. I think it moves up to 103, 104,000 next year. So he has, we know what the prices are each of the next six years going forward. Okay. And those are locked in, so. As I can remember the very first time we did it with the treasurer's department, and you know, it was almost like a little bit of a test we right. go from three years to five years, and right. The first um, one we did was uh, you know there was some services. apprehension back back then because things are so right. Um, you know they fluctuated so much. Right. So, uh, but again the same thing. We did the payroll services with the treasurer's office and that was under David Laplante. Uh, we did it a handful of times at three years, and at some point we realized there's no reason to just keep doing it every three years. It just didn't doesn't behoove us to do that. So, 
And I agree for the most part that we should be doing six anyway, so. I, I, I am fully in favor of moving to any of these services and there's maybe some more down the line, we'll see that uh, for these various reasons, there's no reason to keep going three three years. Just keep moving up to the six years. I mean, we can move back. We have, we have service contracts in the trades for a roofing, plumbing, uh, HVAC services, boiler cleaning and repair, electrical services, minor carpentry, uh, a few others. And those were, those typically run three years. We would never go more than three years based on those just for pricing because it's, it's difficult to forecast out farther than that. But as an example, we did three years for many years. And then we've got to 2008, 2009 when we had the big recession last time, we went back to one year contracts mm -hmm. because the pricing was too volatile and to go longer than a one year, one year contract was more volatile to the city than right. it was to the vendor. Because when financial times are, are uncertain, bidders, contractors will up their price. Anybody will up their price because they have to cover themselves. So that's why we went to a one-year contract in 2009 after mm -hmm. the recession hit. And we kept that one-year contract in place for a good five or six years. We just kept rebidding those services every year, which no one was really happy about. Uh, the departments didn't like it because they've got to get new vendors every year. So they just started learning the various building systems and someone new comes in has to learn it all over again. Contractors don't like it because, well, you know, they're here for a year, they get used to it, then they're out because someone else replaces them. But from a pricing point of view, it was better for us because we couldn't trust that they would give us the best price during those financial times. So, do, and do then you we find would, there's any, any danger with um, someone having a six-year contract and not, not doing the best they can because they know they're secure in that six years? No, we have, uh, I won't say we haven't had problems. We occasionally we have problems with, with vendors. We have terminated some contracts, not many over the years, but we have terminated some. We've ended up in a lawsuit once or twice that we've won, because we were right <laughs> um, on some contracts. But overall, we don't, I've never seen that happen to any large extent. And again, under contract law, we don't have to stay locked into a contract either for multi-year. The vendors, it's a contract. We have to pay and do what our end of the contract says, but the vendors have to uh, live up to their uh, end of the bargain, the expectations of them that are laid out, spelled out in detail in the contract. So if you don't have somebody who's um, meeting those benchmarks, we have every right to terminate the contract. No department or the city overall has to stay with a vendor providing services if they're not providing them up to par contractually. Okay, I'm gonna Thank stop. You. I'm gonna stop you right there and we'll come back to this in just a minute. Time is seven yeah. o'clock. So I'm gonna uh, call the regular meeting of the Lemons City Council to order. I'm sorry. Um, if you will all stand, please join me for a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. I will now take a roll call of the Honorable Members of the Lemons City Council, beginning with Councilor Bonanza. Present. Councilor Cormier. Present. Councilor Ardinger. Present. Councilor Angelini. Present. Councilor Brady. Here. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. Present. Councilor Deacon. Present. Councilor Frieda. Here. And present. I, and I am all present. There are all nine members of present. Um, I will ask at this <coughs> time if we can have a uh, motion for a recess. Okay. Councillor Chalfo Zephyr, Councillor Frieda seconded. All those in favor of going into recess signify in the usual manner. Those opposed by a vote of nine to nothing. We are now in recess. Councillor Frieda, were you all set with your questions? I'm set. Thank okay. you. Councillor Chalfo Zephyr. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks, Greg, for coming down because You're there welcome. were some questions and just it really helps to put this all in context because so many more of the contracts are going the way of longer contracts. So my question is. Um, you know, when you do go out for bid for a longer term contract, a five, six, 10 year contract, do the rules change? Does the state law change basically if, you know, if you're going for, out for a standard two, three year contract, but then you want to go out for a longer term, are you operating under different state guidelines, state purchasing guidelines? No, the, okay. the various purchasing laws that apply depending on the category and dollar amount, category of good or item, uh, service or item and the dollar amounts involved always remain the same. Mm -hmm. The only main thing is uh, for anything past three is we have to come to the uh, governing body, which in the city, in case of a city is the city council for permission to go beyond the three years. But other than that, the laws that I have to follow, that the city has to follow in bidding these things out always remain the same. Okay, great. That's Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council, but 
I think I saw your hand as well. Good evening, Greg. Good evening, Council. I think you alluded to this, but um, one thing I think the public should know is that these contracts uh, do have an escape um, yes. provision in them where if, if yes. the contractor isn't um, performing, uh, it is in, certainly Correct. is in material breach, but even if they're just not performing, there's a Correct. way for the city to get out of the contract. Yes, early, we, have, right? we have termination at will clauses in the contract, actually, which uh, KP Law had advocated that we do many years ago. So. Yeah. Yes. Which is comforting to know because yes. generally I think these work out, but I'm sure there's an occasion where things don't work out. So. There, there are occasions here and there. Most yeah. times we'll meet with a vendor and um, have a disciplinary hearing, if you will, on what they're failing on, and many bring them up to standards. But once in a great while, uh, we do, and, and I want to stress it's once in a great while. We've been very fortunate in that, that regard. Uh, we do have one that goes rogue here and there, and we have to terminate the contract. And like I said earlier, twice maybe, maybe three times in so many years uh, okay. we've had any lawsuits from a vendor who was angry, and, and luckily the city's won because the city was in its right to do so, and it's just the contract is just ticked off because they're getting right. terminated. Thank you for that. Yep, no problem. Thank you, Councillor Angelini. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Um, let me say for the record, I'm a big fan of the extended contract. Thank you. I'm certainly a big fan of the forestry contract, the tenure contract. And I think to your point about vendors in certain economic conditions, like right now we're in an inflationary cycle. Right. So if I was a vendor and I was approached to provide a six-year contract right now, I'd be coming in with some pretty heavy numbers on the back end of that contract to cover myself and those unknowns of what that rate of inflation is going to be for the next five years. Right. So Potentially, yes. But, but I think the city has benefited tremendously from the contracts that we're in now. Yes. And we're enjoying that period that we locked in um, at a much lower rate than we did today on many of the different services that we're on. Correct. Am I correct in this Yes, you would be correct in that. So kudos to you for, thank for you. Uh, bringing this to uh, the council. And uh, thank you so much. Your presentation was wonderful. I it was Very good. Thank you. Didn't leave much room for questions. Thank you. Very good. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Chapdelaine regarding six-year contracts? Okay. Thank you very, very much. Greg, hey, you're welcome, Council. Thank you for having we me. And I would it. like to also thank the Council for supporting these multi-year contracts when they come down and uh, know that we only do so when we think it's in the best interest of the city. So it's not done uh, lightly. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. You want to get to the public forum thing? Nobody's probably signed up. But. Okay. Uh, before we go back into uh, session, I'm going to hold the public forum. The public forum is an opportunity for any member of the audience to speak on a matter specifically listed on the council agenda. Speakers will be asked to come to the microphone and state their formal name and address along with identifying the specific item or, or items they wish to address. Address Each speaker is respectfully asked to keep their comments within a two minute time frame. The council will not be responding or answering any questions. However, at the discretion of the council president, clarification may be given. No one has signed up this evening. But I will ask, would anybody in the audience like to speak at the public forum? Once again, would anybody in the audience like to speak at the public forum? And for the third and final time, would anybody in the audience like to speak at the public forum? Seeing none, I declare the public forum closed. And we are now back in session. Um, <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is uh, a moment of silence. It is with uh, very um, heavy hearts that we have to have a moment of silence for um, our health director, Jeff Stevens. Um, he passed away very unexpectedly. Um, he w did not work for the city of Lemonster for all that long, or right around a year, maybe a little less, but his impact here was uh, felt by many in that short amount of time. Um, he was very, very, very proud to work for the city of Lemonster. Um, as soon as he got to work here, he told everyone that this, this was the place for him. This was where he wanted to probably end his career. He was very happy here. Um, he was proud to work here. And that pride was showed, uh, was seen by many that he worked with every day. Um, and I certainly um, had a few dealings with him since he's been with the city and was very wonderful to work with. 
um, and he's going to be a great loss to the city of Lemonster. Um, we all, most of us went to the wake this evening. Um, there were people standing outside for about two and a half hours in the rain. So I think that um, shows what somebody means to so many people to uh, stand out in the first rain we've had probably in a hundred days um, to show their condolences to his wife and two children and his parents that lost somebody very special to them. So um, I'd like to uh, ask if anybody has wants to make a few uh, remarks. Uh, we'll go around the room if so, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a moment of silence. Councilor Schaffel Zephyr. Yep, thank you very much, um, Mr. President. When I came down here, the line, when we all got there a little bit before four o'clock was really long, way out into the, uh, the parking lot in front of the, um, the Senior Center and Veterans Center. When I came back down here to the meeting, at just about um, 20 minutes of seven, the line was longer. It was almost to the end of that parking lot. So there were hundreds of people, I think, uh, you know, waiting in line and, and waiting to, you know, pay their respects. Um, I didn't know Jeff Stevens a whole, for long, but I did meet him in, in his capacity and worked with him very closely um, at Jenny's Helping Hands during the, um, the pandemic. And what I immediately really liked about him or loved about him was he was out there in the community, you know, with his, um, he had, you know, the vest that, you know, said he was the department director and so he was just very much a hands-on kind of out there talking to businesses, helping people, you know, providing COVID test kits when we couldn't get any and we had people lined up at our door around the holidays. Um, test kits, KN95 masks, I mean, he was a real big help. And he offered that kind of help. I mean, I didn't have to chase him. And after we ran out of the initial supply of um, test kits, we still had people who really needed them. Um, you know, anytime I called him up, he, would, he was very, very responsive, very responsive, um, and, you know, immediately offered assistance. And if he didn't have what we needed, you know, he went elsewhere to look for it. So I know, I know that, you know, staff that I've talked to at Jenny's who, you know, met him and had interactions with him when he did come into Jenny's, they, they feel the loss as well, and, and not having known him very well, like I know some other folks on the council did, but it's a huge loss for the city. It's a tremendous, just sad tragedy for his young family and his wife. So I know we all, you know, will think about him and keep his family, you know, certainly in our thoughts. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any remarks? Councillor Cormier? So I had the privilege of knowing Jeff um, uh, for uh, quite a while, uh, many years at this point, and I, I, I I knew him in his capacity as I knew what he did for a living and he worked for the city of Fitchburg for a long, long time. Uh, when he came on board here in Lemister, I, I, a few people had asked me uh, if I knew him and, and, and to tell them anything about him. And he was the consummate professional. Uh, he loved his work. Um, he was very dedicated uh, to his work. The city is, is going to miss out on having a, a great uh, leader. Uh, here in the city, but I can tell you the way he was with his work is the way he was with every aspect of his life. Um, great family man, um, dedicated, dedicated to his kids, dedicated to the sports. Uh, he coached, he refed, he played, he did everything. He did everything we ever asked of him to do. He would take younger coaches under his wing and, and guide them. Um, so the way he lived his everyday life outside of work and with his work, I, I think the, the city itself is going to miss it. I know, um, I, I, I can speak for myself and, and a lot of people from hockey that, that uh, already miss him dearly. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. David. Council Brady. Uh, I wasn't going, but I did. <clears throat> uh, myself and Jeff had history. Um, with that, I mean, uh, he was a health director in Westboro. I was a restaurant owner. And we had long discussions about the adversarial relation, relationship between the Board of Health and restaurateurs. Um, Jeff had uh, my way of thinking. You know, it, it should be a coaching session, an educational. And it was really refreshing. So when he came on board here and we, we were chatting, and I'm like, this is going to be really special. And we are going to miss him. And hopefully, the people that come in his uh, footsteps will have the 
foresight to partner with people. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any other comments, or any remarks or memories of Jeff? Okay, seeing none, I will now ask for a moment of silence for Jeffrey Stevens, our departed health director. Thank you all very much. Okay, uh, Madam Vice President, um, do you have any records to approve this evening? I do, Mr. President. I have the minutes of the meeting of August 8th, 2022. I have reviewed them. I find them to be in good order, and I ask that they be placed on file. Okay, if there's no, um, if there's no questions or comments or objections, we'll ask that the minutes of August 8th, 2022 be placed on file. Seeing none, those will be placed on file. Moving on to communications from the mayor. Um, C-06, Madam Clerk. C-06, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, request that an appropriation of $15,000 be made to the dog officer expense account, the same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund. And C-06 is referred to the Chairman of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. First time on the calendar, regular course, please. C-06 has been given regular course. C-07. C-07, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, request that an appropriation of $58,000 be made to the following insurance expense accounts, the same to be transferred from stabilization, risk management, $16,000, liability insurance, $4,000, workers' compensation, $38,000, regarding due to contract increase. And C-07 is also referred to the Chairman of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, first time on the calendar, regular course. C-07 has been given regular course. Moving on to appointments. Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests the reappointment of Paul Kennedy to the position of Forest Warden, term to expire 4-15-2024. And this appointment is referred to the Chairwoman of Ways and Means. Uh, regular course, Mr. President. This appointment has been given regular course. We're going to communications from the Mayor. Continued petition C-08. Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests that the City Council adopt the attached ordinance updates. This ordinance update to Chapter 16, Personnel, Section 16-30 of the Lemonster Revised Ordinance reflects, one, Lemonster Fire Department salary and wage adjustments for the fiscal year 2022 through fiscal year 2024. Lemonster Police Department salary and wage adjustments for the fiscal year 2022 through fiscal year 2024. Dispatch salary and wage adjustments for the fiscal year 2022 through fiscal year 2024. And C-08 will be referred to the chair, uh, the chairman of legal affairs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. First time on the agenda, regular course, and we schedule a public hearing. Mm -hmm. And the city clerk would be kind enough to give me an available date and time. We are looking at September 12th at 6.50 p.m. September 12th at 6.50 p.m. it is. Thank okay. you, Madam Clerk. All right. So um, at this point, I'll ask that we um, give this regular course and take a vote to establish a public hearing for September 12th, 2020 at 6.50 p.m. All those in favor signify in the usual manner. Those opposed? By a vote of nine to zero, that public hearing has been established. Moving on to 2-23, uh, uh, Madam Clerk. 2-23, Peter Angelini, Ward 5 Counselor, requests that the city accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 32, Section 3, Group Paragraph, allowing EMTs as members of Group 4. And 2-23 is referred to the Chairman of Legal Affairs. First time on the agenda, Mr. President, uh, rec regular course with referrals. Uh, to the mayor's office, uh, the Lemonster Fire Department, the Retirement Board, and Human Resources, please. Okay, 2-23 has been given regular course with a referral to the mayor, the fire department. I'm assuming that's to be the chief, fire chief. Chief, yes. Um, uh, the Retirement Board and uh, Wendy Hurley, the yeah, Human Resource Director, okay. And, and we're also going to need to schedule a public hearing as well. No? There's not an ordinance change, it's an acceptance of a master law, so we don't need a public thank hearing. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Councilor Schaaf, what's that Yes, thank you very much. Uh, for prior to the next meeting, could we have um, copies of each of the sections of master law that these are referring to? Sure. For each of them, thanks. Okay. 
Is there any other any other comments before we? Three dash twenty three, Madam Clerk. Three dash twenty three. Peter Angelini, Ward 5 Counselor, requests that the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 41, Section 11N, indemnification of EMTs. 3-23 is also referred to the Chairman of Legal Affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. First time on the agenda, regular course. On this one, I would um, request referrals to the Mayor's Office, uh, Fire Chief, and HR. Okay, so 3-23 is given regular course with a referral to the Mayor's office, the fire chief, and the human resource director. Okay. That's correct, Mr. President. Thank okay. you. 4-23, Madam Clerk. 4-23, Peter Angelini, Ward 5 Counselor, requests that the city accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 41, Section 111M, EMTs leave without loss of pay. And 4-23 is referred to the chairman of legal affairs. Once again, Mr. President, first time on the agenda, regular course with referrals the mayor's office, uh, the fire department chief, and HR department. Okay, 4-23 will also be given regular course with a referral to the mayor's office, the fire chief, and the human resource director. Uh, there are no matters before the city council this evening. However, I'll ask the chairman of finance if you're prepared to give a financial report. I am. Um, the city began the fiscal year on July 1st with a balance in the stabilization account of $20,675,366. Since then, we've added interest to the account of $9,370, making a total in the account of $20,684,736. We have approved um, or have pending uh, appropriations of $765,878. And that will leave a balance in the count of $19,918,858, and that is the financial report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any questions or comments on the financial report? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, um, there are no items on the agenda under finance. I'll ask if there's any new business, any old business, anything on the community calendar. Wow, very quiet tonight. You might want to mention Starburst. Uh, I think is, uh, Starburst is coming up August 27th, right? That's right, this coming Saturday night. Should be, hope, we'll hope for good weather after having months of no rain. Hopefully we can have another Saturday night. That'll be a beautiful night for everybody to gather down at Doyle Field. Early voting starts Saturday. Early voting starts Saturday, says the city clerk. Nine to five. Nine to five. Okay, any other? things that come to mind for the community calendar? Move to adjourn. Seeing none, we, uh, motion by Councilor mm -hmm. Bedanza and a second by Councilor Shalfu Zephyr to adjourn. All those in favor of adjournment signify in the usual manner. Those opposed by a vote of nine to zero, we are now adjourned. Thank you all, have a good night. The Lemonster City Council meeting is funded in part by the Carolis Insurance Agency at www.decarolisinsuranceagency.com and by Avidia Bank at www.avidiabank.com.